Bray Supporter followers? Today, I'm here at the Brayburn Country Club in Newton, Massachusetts to interview football great and Massachusetts native, Doug Flutie. Hi, Mr. Flutie. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Doing all right. I know that today is the 18th annual golf classic you've done. Can you tell me more about the Doug Flutie Jr. Foundation that brought us here today? Uh, we started a foundation in, in my son's name to give him a little bit of a legacy. He was diagnosed with autism at age three. And uh, we felt that we'd start finding events to, to run, and one of them became the golf tournament, which is the 18th year now. Um, we usually average somewhere around $200,000 raised for each golf tournament we've done. And uh, the foundation itself is, um, we set it up to provide services for families that have children with autism. That's great. It must make so many families feel so much better and happy. It really, uh, it's very rewarding in that you, you bump into people in the street that you've helped along the way, that, yeah. you know, through their families and just the arbitrary meetings of, of your foundation did this and helped start this school or helped my, my son in this way. And that's, it's very rewarding. It sounds like it. In the 18 years that you've been doing this this con, I mean, this tournament, have you seen a lot of progress in the fight against autism? Really have. I think when we first started out, not a lot of people were aware of autism and what it was. Yeah. I think our number one thing was our foundation brought an awareness to it nationally. Uh, there's other foundations that have been out there now that maybe have raised even more money than we have. But I think that was the number one thing. Uh, and then, uh, so you get more people on board, more people fighting in the right direction, and all of a sudden there's uh, a lot more benefits for the children. And also, we're at a point now where a, there's a whole generation that are becoming adults, so that now we're even worried about the adult problems of, yes. of maybe getting them jobs, employment, and uh, assisted living housing, things like that. Yes. Well, I know it brought a lot of awareness to me because in my school we read books about it and I didn't really know about it before that. And so now when I see children in my school that, that have it, I, I really know it more. And you know, like you said, it just brings a lot of awareness. Well, I think that, that your generation of kids are a lot more comfortable being around uh, a child with uh, a disability of some type and, and, and understanding it and being there to help. Where my generation, uh, a lot of those kids were set aside in their own class and weren't integrated into the mainstream schooling. And At least so uh, there have been a lot of strides made. Yes. You are known as being such a passionate competitor on the football field. How competitive does it get for you on the golf course? <laughs> I'm not a great golfer and I know that, but I st I, you can't help yourself but to compete. I still yes. want to... Uh, the problem is you think you can do anything and you can go out and yeah, I'll just will this, I'll beat the, you know, it, the harder you try at golf, the worse you are. Yes. I've tried golfing, but only mini golf. I it's probably, I stink at it, mini golf, so I do horrible at real golf. Well, stick with me. Mini golf's fun. Yes. Mini golf, that, I should have just stayed at that level. But by the way, my wife kicks my butt at mini golf. In your career, what is the most valuable life lesson you've learned? Oh, gosh. I, I think for me it's always been uh, to put your heart and soul into it. Whatever, whatever it is you're doing, whether for me it was my preparation for a game, that you, there's nothing worse than being unprepared and not working hard towards something. And to all of a sudden be, you get into the middle of it and you know you're not ready. So I think um, the preparation end of everything, every aspect that you do, and you've got to have a passion for it. To, to dive in and whatever you're going to do, uh, give it 100% and be all in. Yes, like if you did a football game and like you said in the middle you're not prepared, that would be horrible and yeah. It, it's it, just, it's yeah. amazing. It, it, and there's been times where you're on the field and right. you're a little uncertain about something and there's no re you know, that's something you can control. There's so many aspects that you can't control that are yes. variable. You gotta be. You gotta control the things you're able to control. Yes, because if you don't control the things you can control, and the things that you don't control combined, it always make it all. Oh, it'll, it'll yeah. stack up on you in a hurry. Yes. And if any of my followers wanted to make a donation, what's the best way that they can do that? Uh, go online to flutiefoundation.org, and you can you can donate online. Yes. Make sure to donate. Thank you so much. Oh, wait. <laughs> Sorry. I always do my interviews with the question: What's your favorite meal and dessert? 
My favorite meal is pizza. No, no oh, doubt course. about it. Pizza's number one. I'm pizza and pasta, but primarily pizza. Any Italian food, really. I mean, come on. Cheese is sauce. Yeah. But uh, pizza's number one, pepperoni pizza. And then my favorite dessert would have to be a hot fudge sundae. Yes. Hot fudge sundaes are what I say all the time. There you go. Yes. I go to Dairy Queen. It's the best place. For it's that. the best ever. Yes. Absolutely. I used to get banana splits at Dairy Queen all the oh, time. I've never had one. But now I've, I've backed off that. and I just go to the Hot Food Sunday. Yes. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed getting to know Thank you. Thank you. And make sure to donate, Rose Reporter readers.